way of 2023. Amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. We're so grateful for him today. Because we know after 364 days, trouble don't last.
open thing and do it for a night. But joy, joy, come on, stand up on your feet. And get ready for our morning doxology. Amen? Amen. 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 by MIT, Shaquilla Bill, our morning hymn, Blessed Assurance, and our welcome by Sister Danita Shaw. I'll add a blessing to his word. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 32, verses 1 through 8. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my, up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. You, Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with loving eye on you. The word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain standing for our morning hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We shall sing all verses and the chorus to the glory of God. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus, oh, what a foretaste. Heir of salvation. Born of his spirit, born of his spirit. Wash. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising 
my Savior. This is my story. Praising my Savior. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture. Now burst. Angels descending, angels. They bring from above. Echoes of mercy. Savior.
is the name above every name. Somebody said the more I call him, the better I feel. My way out of no way. My bridge over troubled water. Yeah, Jesus. trying to leave it alone, but somebody should have lost your mind in the midst of this year. But the fact that you're here, somebody owes God a praise to just tell them thank you. For if it had not been for the Lord on my side, if it had not been for God's grace and God's mercy, I would have lost it this year. But I thank God I'm still here. Yes, Lord. 
Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. your party stuff, to celebrate that you made it over, but there ought to be about five of us in here that can tell God thank you, that in 2023, through danger seen and unseen, the Lord brought me this far, and because the Lord, because he brought me this far, I gotta give him glory. I gotta tell them thank you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Y'all can wait for a party. But this is my party time. Woo! Yes, sir, Jesus. Yes, sir, Jesus. Yes, sir, Jesus. Yes, sir, Jesus. For the joy. I said the joy of the Lord. Yeah, my heart. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. No, no, don't let it go. I need you to put your weight on it. Because somebody here came to do this this morning. And we came to give them glory. And we came to give them glory. And we came to give them glory. And we came to give him glory. I came to give him glory. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. And we're not going to rush for nobody. You can clap your hands. You can lift your hands. But we're not going to move from this place. Because somebody owes God a thank you. Somebody owes God a hallelujah. Somebody can tell God thank you. That I still have my family. I still have my mind. I still have the activity of my limbs. I should be dead and gone, but I'm here today, and we gonna tell them thank you. We gonna give them glory. We gonna give them glory. We gonna give them glory. We gonna pop it, pop it, pop it. You can help. We gonna give them glory. 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 You go ahead, praise him, Isaiah. We gon' give him glory. We gon' give him glory. We gon' give him glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is what I woke up this morning for. I didn't come to look cute. I didn't come to check a box. I came because God is good to me. I came to give him glory. 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 Yes, Lord. 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 Lord, you can have your way. If we can sing a hymn, we can do our dance. I can't hear nobody pray because he's this worthy. He is just that worthy. And he is just that good. Yes, Lord. 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 Listen, you may not be able to run, 
You may not be able to physically dance, but if you got a mouth, you can open it and give God praise. You can give him thanks. You ain't got to shout like your neighbor. You don't have to run like your neighbor. But if God has been good to you, you can whisper a thank you, Jesus. You ain't got to get out of your own personality. But God deserves this glory. God deserves this praise. And we will not apologize for doing what the Bible says. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all ye people. That's what the word of God says. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him for his mighty acts. Let everything that has breath praise him with the high symbols. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, bless your name. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we give you glory. Oh, God, we give you glory. Oh, God, we thank you for being here today. We thank you, God, for feeling your presence today. We thank you, God, for your healing virtue in this room. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, you're worthy. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey you. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I agree and my answer somebody needs to tell the Lord yesterday will be yes Lord, Lord yes I'll I'll say yes Lord yes to your trust you.
to your will, to your will. I turned it around, it's all right. With your spirit, with, with my whole heart. is open. My mics are good. The altar is open. We're going to move our altar call here. We're not going to just push the announcements because somebody wants them to go now. But I feel the time of prayer is now. So if you have a concern, if you have a burden, won't you bring it to the Lord? The altar is open today. If you've got something that you're saying, God, I don't want to carry into next year, the altar is open. If you just want to come to the altar because you're just grateful, because you're thankful to be alive, because because God has been good to you. The altar is open. And my We're praying for Sister Annette Harden. We're praying for Sister Ramona Reed. I'm excited. We got two brand new parents. Praise the Lord. Amen. We come on. Let's tell God thank you. We got us a, a new baby. Y'all come on. Tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Somebody. I believe he's a junior. Is that right? Amen. Somebody happy, Daddy. Amen. Little little black and gold baby. But we can we give God praise. Lord. Amen. Come on. Pray for us. Just start saying something to God, what you're uh, saying to him, what you're asking for, what you're thanking him. Just go ahead and lift it up right now in the name of Jesus. God, we bless your name. God, we lift your name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for bringing us here this far, God, throughout this year. God, we thank you, God. We lift your name of Jesus. God, we thank you for bringing us together right now to just to bless your name, God. God, whatever we stand in the need of, God, we ask you to lift it up. up giving it to us abundantly right now in the name of Jesus. Heal where we need to be healed. Right now in the name of Jesus. Touch our blood cells right now in the name of Jesus. God, we touch every sick and the shut in. God, we bless them right now in the name of Jesus. God, whatever we stand in the need of whatever we are, have accomplished, God, we thank you, God, for doing it just right now, God. We thank you for being obedient, being, we, for us being obedient to you, God. Following your footsteps throughout the year, God. Whatever that we have done wrong, God, for Give us, God, what we have done, haven't done right. God, we thank you. God, we bless your name. God, we thank you for the newborns that have, that's, just, that's come forth, God. We bless your name, God. We thank you for their birth, God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, as we leave this place, God, we bless your name in the name of Jesus. We let, ask you to cover us right now, God, as we go on, get ready to go in to the new year that you're going to bless us in. In Jesus' name, we do pray, and we all say amen. So we'll be yes, Lord, yes. And I answer will be yes. And my answer will be yes. And my answer and my answer will Last time on my answer. Great morning. God has a sense of humor. I said I was going to come today, try to be a little cute in a little red jacket, my hair piece. My frame, he tore all that up. You hear me? <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much. 
Um, on December 14th, we lost, um, me and my family, we lost um, a family member who was very important and near and dear to us, December 14th. On December 16th, my oldest daughter's partner lost her mother to pancreatic cancer, and this happened within all of three weeks. December 14th, December 16th. But on December 15th, God allowed me to wake up again on my born day. I'm going to say it again. On December 14th, we lost a family member. Skip December 15th, and on December 16th, we lost someone else who was a dear friend to the family. But on December 15th, he allowed me to wake up again. So when I, when I came to church this morning, I knew I was going to feel a, a, a kind of way because on the second Sunday, and, and um, the devil has been doing what he does. So on the second Sunday, I came, showed up, I was supposed to do the announcements, got right outside of the church, and we had to leave because we had a family emergency. So I had to send word to Deacon McHugh that I wouldn't be able to come in because we had something going on. And then we had the deaths in the family and whatnot. And then this morning they sang Blessed Assurance. And all I could think about is, I don't know if Ms. Bowden, Ms. Diane Bowden is watching, but how she had us lined up here. We were about this high. We had on these white shirts with a great big red bow. And she split the verses. Dana had one verse, Dana Bowden, and I had a verse. David, don't sit up there and act like you don't remember what I'm talking about because you were in the choir too. Um, but it's a blessing to be here among the living. And if, as Pastor said, you can't put it here, you can put it down here and, and say thank you for honoring me, for letting me wake up this morning. Again, great morning, West Durham. To our members worshiping with us today in person and online, I am Sister Janita Shaw on behalf of, and on behalf of our illustrious pastor. I'm going to find a new adjective for 24, okay? On behalf of our illustrious pastor, the Reverend Dr. Lamont Johnson, Sr., officers and members of the West Durham Baptist Church, we welcome all visitors to our service today. Whether you are worshiping with us in person or online, we are so glad that you chose West Durham Baptist Church. We hope that you will be so inspired that you will want to join us again. If you are new in the area and looking for a church home, please consider making West Durham Baptist Church your church. Thank you and have a blessed day and a very happy new year. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Amen, somebody. We thank God, amen, for the announcements. My announcements shall be brief. Um, we are thankful for uh, this day. Uh, we invite you tonight to come to share with us at 6 p.m. with our neighbors, uh, Mount Calvary United Church of Christ, their pastor, Pastor Ray Watkins. My he is my friend and my brother, and we are excited for this fellowship that was going on long before I was here. So tonight at 6 p.m., uh, this is in lieu of what would have been a 10 p.m. service that would have gone into midnight, um, but to accommodate our seniors, we actually changed this during the pandemic, and it worked, and, it, and, it, and it's working good. Amen, somebody. So we will have uh, security out tonight, um, but please, man, please, sir, come back out tonight. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Y'all know I, I, I did the order of worship, so we're not going to be here until midnight. Praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. So we're going to come enjoy Jesus um, uh, on tonight. Uh, on Wednesday night, there'll be no Bible study. We will be uh, at Peace Baptist Church. Uh, we invite everyone to come West Durham. This is our night, our big night. They've asked the churches, um, so many churches to come per night. Uh, and you, we usually have representation all week long. Um, thank God. Uh, we have uh, two preachers. The flyer is in the hallway. The first uh, two nights will be Dr. Gina Stewart. Um, the first female president of Lot Carry Missions Society. We ought to give God praise for that. That is a longstanding organization for which we give our missions money to. 
And so we are excited. And she is the Lord's preacher. Amen, somebody. You need to be there. But our music ministry will be opening up in praise and worship. And then we will be staying, amen, to support the worship of that day. Uh, we, I want to thank God, amen, I know we've got some birthdays, we've mentioned all the birthdays, but we have a big 60, amen, on, on this week, amen, Elder Cain will be 60 and looking good, amen, somebody, and we thank God for that. Now, she's turning 60, but we got a new, new, new baby, amen, Charles and Kristen Millette, amen, has a new baby, amen, somebody, Charles Millett Jr., amen, somebody. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's thank God for that, amen, sitting there right next to their big sister, Chloe Millett, amen. Hey, Chloe, with your pretty self, also, amen, somebody, that's right. And so we are, we are just thankful for you and your family that's here on today. We missed y'all when y'all were absent, amen, but we knew that y'all were doing what you're supposed to do. Let that baby get strong, praise the Lord. But we were praying while you were gone, and so glad to have you all back here on today. We say God be praised. Do we have any visitors today? All visitors, just lift your hand. If you're a visitor, look at that. Come on, let's thank God. Come on, let's celebrate God for our visitors. Now, do we have any first-time visitors? Anybody here for the first time? One, look at that. Two, three, four. Amen. Come on, West Durham, we can do better than that. Let's thank God for our first-time visitors. That's right. We are glad that you came, <laughs> that you came to worship with us on today. And we pray something has already been said and done. And we've got one more up front um, with our ushers also all, all the way up front. Again, if you are a first-time visitor, we want to put something in your hand. Just lift your hand real quick. First-time visitors, we want to make sure, lift your hands, our first-time visitors. We want to put something in your hand. We got one up here front. Amen. We just want to give you a little something to say thank you so much for joining us here at West Durham, praying that you will come again. Amen. And worship with us. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for being with us on today. Amen. Well, I believe, oh, there is one thing. Now, last week, we celebrated our girl superpower. Amen. Dee Dee, amen. I know she's going back. Dee Dee, stand up. Our college students, all of our college students, if college student here. Amen. Stand up real quick. There you go. Come on. Let's give. Let's give. Amen. Last week, we celebrated Dee Dee. Amen. Nigel, stand up. Nigel is here. Nigel. Now, Dee Dee is at Howard. Amen. There you go. Go by. He says, amen, somebody. Amen. There you go. And, and, and I wore a special pin on. Y'all see my pin? Amen. Y'all see it? It's, it's blue and gold. Amen, somebody. I, I wore this blue and gold pin when I saw the text message um, about Nigel's five classes for which his first semester at the North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University made a 4.0. I need the village to make some noise in here. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we are so proud of you. We are so proud of you, D.D. Y'all keep on doing what you're doing and know that you have a church family, amen, that is praying for you and literally pushing you so you can go all the way, amen. And like the old folk would say, and when you get there, stay with the Lord, amen, somebody. Uh, what about the eagles? What? I, it's time for our sermonic selection, praise the Lord. All right, amen. Praise the Lord for the eagles. I don't know why, but praise the Lord for the eagles anyhow. Amen. Our music ministry is coming <laughs> with our sermonic selection. Come on, clap your hands as they come. <laughs> As they come with one correction, um, the Citywide Revival, I apologize, is at Union Baptist Church. Um, I apologize. Want to make sure that everyone goes because I would have been at the wrong place, praise the Lord, wondering why our service was late. Amen. <laughs>
We thank God. Amen. We're going to do something today a little different. We're going to have impromptu children's church. Our youth pastor is going to go and gather now. And so we invite anybody, anybody 17 and under, amen, that wants to go. Amen. Teens, y'all are good. Y'all are good. Amen. Our youth pastor, as he comes down, and we're going to invite Poppy to go be his assistant today. We invite all our young people to go. Amen. That's right. Let them go with our youth pastor. Come on, let's get our youth pastor. That's right. Amen. Some, y'all, it's hard to be a child in church today. Amen. Y'all go ahead. They can take them with them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all give our young people a hand, our youth a hand. Amen. It's hard to be a child in church, y'all. Amen, somebody. And thank God we have some uh, uh, youth workers, amen, that's ready to handle, amen, our young people at the drop of a dime, drop of a notice, amen, praise the Lord. Y'all, at least five parents ought to say praise the Lord, amen, somebody. We thank God, amen. We usually have our children's church on the second and fourth Sunday, and so we extend it on today, amen, for the comfort, amen, and worship. Uh, experience of our adults, and we thank God for that. All right, so Psalms 32 and 8 is our key verse today. Now, I have this, uh, it should be in King James Version. Let me read it um, from the King James Version so we can hear it in the original language. So, in the, uh, I want to make sure I read this in the original language as um, it will help us have better understanding. Uh, from the King James Version, it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. I will guide thee. Thank you so much. With mine eye. The word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, I want to preach from the simple thought Guided by God's eye. Guided by God's eye. Amen. Shall we pause and pray together? Thank you. Guided by God's eye. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy for this worship experience. God, I am grateful, God. God, it has been a year and a half for somebody and so we thank you for the freedom to worship like we have today. Now, God, give us the wisdom now to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Bless us even now in Jesus' name. And the people of God together say, Amen. Guided by God's eye. This, this, this and I'm going to get to the song later on. There has been a song that has been in my mind. Um, it's an old song, um, I will guide thee, I will guide thee, I will guide thee with mine eye, um, all the way from earth to heaven, some say glory, but I will guide thee with mine eye. My Uncle Otis, who passed last year, um, used to sing this song along with Peaks Baptist Church in the country, who still sings this song um, on a regular basis, and they would sing not necessarily the verses that were there that were written originally in the mid-1800s to this hymn, but they would sing, if you cannot sing like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus that he died to save us all. And I, I was a little kid, as a little kid, I would sit there in peaks and hear them sing, I will guide thee, I will guide thee, I will guide thee with mine eye. This is God speaking. We know it is David writing. But then, then the, 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 the personage of the writing changes uh, to God saying, I will instruct you, I will teach you, and I will guide you with mine eye. Now, as a little kid, as our little children were here today, um, hearing sometimes these big words and things, and that's why we thank God for youth ministry that can break these things down to them uh, on their level, at the, their level, and they do that well. But I struggle with the fact that we talked about how God is a spirit, how God is everywhere at the same time, how God is omnipresent, how God God is omniscient. And then I would hear them say, I will guide thee with mine eye. And, and, and I, I struggle with this, Reverend Rawls, because if God is a spirit, why does he need an eye? Y'all walk with me here today. Now, we're going we gonna to teach for a little. Now, we done shouted and danced. Now, we're going to learn. And, and, and so, this is a word called anthropomorphism. It's a big word, so I'll put it here on the screen. The 
attribution of human characteristics or behavior to a God, animal, or object. Now, we know for us it is not a God, lowercase g-o-d, but capital G, God, to the eternal, to Yahweh, to Jehovah, to the one unseen mover, the one that is the God of all eternity. And so watch this, this human attribute is something that all of us should know. It is not necessarily some eyeball with an iris, come on y'all, and, and, and something like this, but it is the fact that God sees. Yes, that God has the ability to know our going and our coming, to know where we are, where we've been, and where we're going at the same time. God sees us. That God's eye is upon us. And even as we sing that song, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. Y'all know it, don't you? His what? Eye, y'all got it, is on the sparrow. His eyeball ain't there. But the fact that the song is saying that if God can watch a little sparrow, God can watch 200. Okay, I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh now. God has his eye on me. Now, I don't know if you feel like I feel, but I thank God that God has his eye on me. That God is watching my going and my coming. That God is watching my uprising and when I do have them, my downfalling. And so all of us should know that God is watching us. And watch this. Now, when you know that God is watching you, you understand that God is watching where you're going. That, that where you are right now is not necessarily where you're going to be. And hopefully there's somebody in 2023 on this last day that can say, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I thank God that God has greater for me on tomorrow. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm not walking into this this new year with my head down with a pessimistic attitude I'm walking into a new year believing God can do just what he says he's going to do I don't know how he's going to do it I don't know where he's going to do it I don't know when he's going to do it but we have to believe that God can guide us, that God can lead us, that God can show us which way to go. Now, I struggle with that because as I was praying about what this morning message would be, I don't know what Pastor Ray is going to preach, but I, I was saying, Lord, what is, what is literally God, what is your direction for what the word is on today? And I kept going to sleep singing that song, I will guide thee, I will guide thee. I kept on hearing it and I, I saw the scripture I was going one way with the other scripture thinking about the spies in the land that literally had to go to the place there in the in, in the Torah where, where they were sent out to spy out the land. I said, no, that's not it. Then the Lord took me to those tent, to those lepers there in the Old Testament where they realized they were in a bad place. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go back, we're going to die. But we got to move forward. But God didn't allow me to go that way. But God sent me here as I was at Christmas Day. Oh, Y'all walk with me here. Christmas, Christmas Day, Chris, Christmas, sitting around, sitting around the house, made some food. I'm not going to tell you what I cooked, but it was, it was delicious, and we had a good time, and um, had my boys, all my boys were there, uh, Poda or Lamont Jr., his girlfriend, they rode up from Winston-Salem and had all four boys there, so y'all know I was in heaven. We opened our presents, we Went, had dinner around the tree. We had dinner around, the, uh, dinner around the table at first. I'm going somewhere. But then as we sat down to open the presents, my sons, they, I don't look for much for my kids because they ain't got no money. I can't hear nobody pray. <laughs> amen. So I buy my own self Christmas presents. Praise the Lord, somebody. I, I got about five parents that'll say amen, somebody. Y'all stop expecting too much from your kids. Amen. <laughs> amen. So, so whatever my children do something, Elder Al, it blesses me. And so with, with a, a cap of mug and mugs and blankets and stuff, Brother Eddie, that does something to me. But, but, but as I was praying about where to go, the Lord sent a strange confirmation through my Christmas gift from my oldest son. Pulled out 
a leather pouch that was in the bag. And I love pocket watches. And I said, oh, he done got me good for Marshall. He got me a pocket watch. I said, this is a big pocket watch. And he said, daddy, open it. And I opened it. Wasn't a really expensive gift. <laughs> but I opened it. And he looked at me and said, it's a compass. He says, because daddy, you travel all the time. And I wanted to give you something so you can always find your way back home. Oh, I'm going somewhere. And, 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 and that blessed me because I travel a lot. And here is my son not giving me something that was thousands of dollars. I don't know. I didn't even look at what it was on Amazon. Come on, praise the Lord. But it was something that reminded me that anywhere I go, I had a way to get back home. I, I, don't, I don't know where you are in your journey. I don't know where you are as you're crossing over into this new year. But there's somebody, if you would be real with yourself, after all that you went through this year, there's somebody in this room that is saying, I don't know which way to go. There is somebody in this room as saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized with your soul, sanctified self. You're saying, I don't don't know which direction to take on my job. I don't know which turn to take with my family. My marriage is on the rocks. I don't know. Do I go to the right? Do I go to the left? There's somebody struggling in your spirit and you're trying to find your way the right way and the Lord sent a message through my son through his Christmas gift to tell you it doesn't matter what road you were in and where you came from that God knows how to guide you the right way and God said I will guide thee I'll guide you with my eyes I don't need to be long today so so what do you do when you don't know which way to go now we done already shouted so I ain't trying to shout you I'm trying to get you to think what do we do? What do you do when you don't know which way to go? First of all, you use your internal compass. That, Some, somebody ought to tell God, thank you for your parents. Thank, thank you for them parents that, watch this, built into you an internal compass. <laughs> I can't hear nobody pray. Now, Nigel, I, I, I know sometimes it's hard when you're growing up. Didi, it's hard growing up, amen, when you had parents, when you'd be like, well, I'm going to go to Hakeem's house. And then your mom and daddy was like, I don't know Hakeem's parents. I can't hear nobody. I don't, I don't know if their house clean. Come on, somebody. I don't know what you're doing at their house. I don't know what kind of creepy um, uncles they got over there. I can't. Y'all ain't going to like what I'm saying. And what they were doing was building into you an internal compass that when you could not hear from external factors which way to go, you had something on the inside saying when you wanted to, uh, don't you do that, I can't hear nobody pray. When you were saying that look good, it's bumping over there, and you got there, and your mama was like, ah, and your mama wasn't even in the car, and you turned around and went another way, and then watched the news the next morning and saw that something atrocious happened. It it was because you had an internal compass. But LJ is not just the internal compass. Scripture didn't say David said, I'm going to guide myself. <laughs> God said to David, I will guide you. So watch this. Even when your internal compass is slow, broke, off, kilted, you lean on your eternal compass. You lean on the one that has a track record of guiding. You lean on the one that literally has a resume <laughs> of guiding those who did not know which way to go. Guiding, help me, Holy Ghost, from, a, from, from Adam ah, to John on the Isle of Patmos. That's what God did. God guides us along. 
Somebody ought to say, God is my eternal compass. Oh, come on, say that for yourself. God is my eternal compass. It should not be Facebook. It should not be anybody else. And even with that, I'm sorry, mama and daddy, your eternal compass should not be your parents. I can't hear nobody pray. Because there are some people, I'm going to get somebody mad with this, that the reason why they can't lean on God was because they were leaning on the God in their mama and daddy. And so when their mama and daddy died, their internal compass was buried. I can't hear nobody pray. And so there are some people that only come to church to make your dead mama and dead daddy happy but that's not why your mama and daddy had you in church they had you in church so when your mother and daddy died you can say if my mother and father forsake me the Lord will take me up that God will be my God I'm going to say it one more time God is my eternal compass so here it is. I go back to my question. What do you do when you don't know which, which way to go? It's in the text right there in verse 8. He says, listen, I will instruct you and teach you. So the first thing right here is listen to God's instruction. Now, it's hard to listen to God's instructions when your ears are tuned to everything but God. It's hard to know huh, God's voice uh -oh. when you only hear God's voice one time a week on Sunday morning if you make it to church. Uh -oh. You ought to have a prayer life and language with God. So that even if the preacher is not preaching, you can know God's voice and hear God's instructions. Now, now I, I, I made sure we didn't get these two confused because instructions are different than teaching. Although there can be instruction and in teaching and teaching and in instructions, the issue is there are people that want all the goodies from God but don't want the instructions from God. We want to build stuff our own way and then wonder why they fall apart when they fall apart because we didn't listen to God's instructions when God told us how to build them. I can't hear nobody pray. We, we try to build churches and build families and build lives and build industries on our own instruction manual and when they crumble, we get confused and the issue is very simple. We didn't follow instructions. I'm almost done. I, I, sh I shared the story before. Me and again, Lamont Jr. Poodle was one day in the room, and every now and then, back in the day, me and Poodle would bump heads, and you know, here I was, you know, all this education, and here my son was, and he was super smart, and we would go and do stuff, and would bump heads at times, and no love lost, I promise you, because that's my boy, that's my baby. And, and one day, we were putting together a bunk bed in the room. I shared this story before, and there I was, uh, knowing how to do stuff, and knowing how to, I've been putting together bunk beds all the time, and it was an Ikea bunk bed. My, half my house is Ikea. Don't laugh at me, that stuff will last if you take care of it. I can't hear nobody pray. I, amen, I got Ikea in my living room, in my bedroom, in the kitchen, everywhere. Amen, somebody. This sermon is not brought to you by the Ikea Corporation. <laughs> amen. But as we were putting together the bunk bed, I, I'm sitting there, and there was a rod that had to go a certain way. And, and if you, even though it looked right, if the, 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 the ladder had to go through a small hole, and it, it aligned well, the bed wouldn't fall apart. But because I put it on upside down, you could not screw the ladder in. And because you couldn't screw the ladder in, the top bunk bed was useless. It looked good. The frame was, was good. It matched. It looked like it was strong. But because I was doing it my way, I can't hear nobody pray, it was not it, we could not use it to the full capacity it was designed. And there, sitting on the floor, Lamont Jr. Poodle looked at me and said, Daddy, that's wrong. I said, it ain't wrong. I said, I've been putting these beds together before you were born. I can't hear nobody pray. I'll put your crib together. You ain't die. 
I put the bicycles together. You ain't die. I've been doing this all the time. He said, Daddy, it's wrong. I said, I know it's not wrong because I put the bunk beds together. He lifted up a piece of paper and said, Daddy, I'm reading the instructions and you're doing it the wrong way. Don't get mad at God when God gives you a correction telling you you're doing it the wrong way. Just, just listen to the instruction. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the, in the counsel of the ungodly nor walk seats, sits in the place of the skinners, but their sinners, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. Listen to God's instruction. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him at what? He'll direct your path. I'm there. Listen to God's instructions, but then learn God's Mm. Church is great. Sunday school is better. Sunday morning is amazing. Bible study is better. Now, somebody's going to get mad at me for saying that. But when you come to church, you're not coming here to raise your hand except for worship. But when you have a question, you can raise those questions in Sunday school. I know I was going to lose about 50 amen. You can raise those questions in Bible study. And watch this. I, I was driving along the other day, literally, and we would play games with my boys. I, I'm, I'm done. This sermon is not in, I'm, I'm called uh, Dr. Johnson and Sons, but I guess it could be. We were riding, and, then, and just the other day, uh, Gabriel, my youngest, said, Daddy, who created the church? And I was ready to give him an answer, not because I've got degrees, but because I've studied God's teaching. Uh oh, here it is, and I'm done. And then we rode by a local church right here in Durham that is literally a cult that worships a woman they call God the mother in Korea. Drive by it all the time. And they have church in their name, crosses there, but they believe that this man that came a few years ago was the reincarnation of Jesus. We don't need another Jesus. We had one. And he's alive and well. I can't hear nobody pray. But when we learn God's teaching, we know we have a guide when we don't know which way to go. I know this is not a shouting point because we've already danced. In this year of 2024, find your place, find yourself in a place of teaching and instruction. Not so Ayana can fix your life, not so Oprah can help you, not so you can get what you need off of X or Twitter, whatever it's called, not so you can find out what somebody else has said on Facebook, book, or Instagram so you can know what God has to say for your life. And so the hymn writer says it like this, guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty, a flat. Guide me, hold me with thy powerful hand, bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me now and evermore. The old word said, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me now and evermore. But I wanted us to hear this this third verse, when I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction. Land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. So I hear my uncle singing again. I will guide thee, I will guide thee, I will guide thee with my eye all the way from earth to heaven. 
I will guide thee with mine eye. If you cannot sing like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus that he died to save us all. I know it's old school, but somebody ought to say, I will guide thee. I will guide thee. I will guide thee with my eye all the way from earth to heaven. I will guide thee with my eye. Let's all stand on our feet, please. The song is lit. God guide you. This is your opportunity to come to Christ, to give your life to Christ. Don't let 23 go out without having a personal relationship with him. Giving your life to Christ. Tomorrow is not promised. The next second is not promised. Amen. Getting in your car, going home is not promised. This is your opportunity to have a personal relationship with God. This is your opportunity. said the same thing a different way and they said it like this I am thine O Lord I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me but I long to rise Come on, one, raise that chorus, draw, draw. 
am elated. I am absolutely elated. Amen, somebody. Many of you, amen, may know her. Amen. Some may not, but we are thankful today. Um, joining today on her Christian experience is one, uh, uh, somebody that's been connected to West Durham for years. <laughs> amen. For years and has been extraordinarily kind to us. Amen. Um, uh, just extraordinarily kind to the church, and we are so thankful to that. But today, coming to join West Durham on her Christian experience is Sister Elaine B. Amy. Somebody come on and tell God. That, oh, come on. We can tell God. Thank you for that. Hallelujah to God. We are thankful. We are thankful. We know you're not a stranger to the church. You're not a stranger to this new pastor. Amen. We've talked many times. Amen. And I know this even today is not a rash decision as we have spoken about it. So I was elated to see you come in, amen, today, and then walking down the aisle. Amen. We know, I've already told you, we have uh, Deacon Silver, amen. They will follow up with you, amen, um, with uh, uh, immediately after service, amen. I, we'll make sure you're, you, you're connected for our new members um, class. So, you know, we do it virtually. I know we've talked. And so I'm just thankful upon the completion of that class. You'll have all rights and privileges of all members. And so it gives me great joy to tell you this on this last year of 2023. Welcome home. Somebody come on and give God praise for that. If you can go back to your seat. And we thank God. And we thank God. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for our young people that have come back in on today. Amen. West Durham, you have been amazing in your giving this year, and we thank God for it. So I, I, I pray that as we move into this new year, that you prioritize God. Hear me good. I pray that in this new year, you don't look at somebody else's church and talk about all the good things they're doing and not invest in your own church. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. Amen. I pray that in 2024 that you're not going somewhere else talking about, oh, they're doing it over here. And you have gifts and skills and talents that you're not offering to your own church. Amen. Charity begins at home. Amen. We can be the greatest thing in, West, in, in Durham if we wanted to be. Amen. But it starts with us giving first of all to God. Amen. Because as we give to God, it is not any magical thing that we do. We don't take the money in the bag and do some magical ritual with it. We put it in the bank. I can't hear nobody pray. Amen. We pay our bills, make sure there are salaries, and as you give, we can expand. Yes. Amen. Well, well, this is what you do. You first pray, and I mean this, you, that you can trust God yeah. to tithe. Yeah. Tithing is about trust. It's not about what you got in your bank account. It's not. We've got some seniors here that are on fixed income that tithe. They give God a tenth of what they have. And God takes that 90, and they're never lacking for bread. That God makes your ends meet. So this is what you do. The Bible says, bring your tithes into the storehouse. This is our storehouse. He says, and improve me, and you'll see, will I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you'll not have room enough to receive? He says, if you give it, I'll then give it back to you. Anybody heard this? Good measure. Y'all got it pressed down, shaken together, and then running over. So we stand to our feet as we prepare to give to God. We have four ways to give here. In person, through our receptacles, secure boxes at the exits. You can give online at westdurhambaptist.org. You can give through the mobile app, Givelify, download it and put a heart next to West Durham. Or you can give your gift through the mail. Let me say this unashamedly, without any equivocation. If you are a business owner or somebody and you need to make sure your taxes are straight, you ain't got to send a check across the country. You can give right here. Praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. Make your money work for you. Amen. Let's lift those gifts to God and make this declaration with joy and excitement. Not a debt I owe, debt I owe. but a seed I sow. Seed I sow. I'm, sowing I'm sowing where I'm, gro growing. Where I'm growing. 
I'm sowing in the good ground. And I expect a supernatural harvest. Come on, say this part with me. God bless the seed and God bless the sower. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray I see you all tonight, but if I don't, I pray you have an amazing new year. Receive the Lord's blessing and impartation. You are blessed in the city. You're blessed in the fields. You're blessed in your going and in your I speak the blessing of the Lord into your life and declare you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. This is your mentality that you are the lender and no longer the borrower. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ may rest, rule, and abide both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And we all say, seated as the ushers will guide us out.